Hello, everyone. Welcome to my session. This is Ya Fang Wu from Huawei Cloud. Knative is the most popular serverless project in the cloud native world today. As Knative has some terrific future, for example, portable, when compared with other serverless platform. At Huawei Cloud, we built a service platform based on Knative. There are tens of thousands of workloads running on it now. When we are building this platform, we found that improving the performance and minimizing the operational overheads are the key challenges. In this sharing, we will go over first how to minimize memory when you use Knative. And the second, how to improve the performance of Knative in grass state data plane. So what is the serverless? For many people, serverless means for AWS, Lambda, or function as a service, which is called fast. But let's abstract this concept a little bit higher and more general. Gartner says, Serverless is a method that enables resources to be used as an OPEC, virtually unlimited, and a share pool that is continuously available without advanced provisioning and the price in the units of the consumed IT service. Fast is a part of the serverless world, but it is not the whole world. Gartner also says, the evolution of cloud container service is towards distributed cloud and serverless. As you can see from this slide, some vendors have released multiple serverless service containers, uh, multiple serverless container service. For example, AWS Fargate and the Google Cloud Run. The main concern about serverless or fast is vendor locking and the Knative is designed to eliminate it. So what is Knative? Let's have a look at of Knative. Knative is the most popular service platform according to CNCF Survey 2019. It is more popular than the second one on the list of the installable software in use. Knative is a tool of choice followed by OpenFast and Kubeless. Knative has two components, serving and inventing. They work, so work together to automate and manage tasks and applications. Serving components helps us to run serverless containers in Kubernetes with ease. Knative takes care of the details of networking, auto-scaling, even can scale to zero, and revision tracking, teams can only focus on core logic using any programming languages. In one team, contains, contains universal subscription, delivery, and management of events. It builds modern apps by attaching compute to a data stream with declarative event connectivity and the developer and the developer friendly object models. In Huawei Cloud, we are continuously innovating in Cloud Native. We are the only founding member and the first platinum member from Asia of Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Top one by committed code in Asia and the top one the number of by the number of project maintainer seats in Asia. Huawei Cloud well, Huawei Cloud also open sources its capabilities in the cloud native field to a diverse range of industries such as Kube Edge, Volcano, and Commander. Now, we are building a service platform based on Knative. We met many challenges, for example, cold start and so on. In this sharing, we will only focus on two of these challenges memory overhead and the performance loss. So now let's look at focus the about two challenges. 
the architecture of Knative Serving is shown in the figure. The user signed a request to the NY Gateway, and the NY Gateway forwards the request to the corresponding port according to the routing rules. Knative Serving provides automatically scaling for applications to match incoming demand. The auto scaler will collect specific metrics from ports to make scale decisions. In Knative, every port has a proxy sidecar, which is called Hill Proxy. It has following functionalities. It's recording the concurrency request for auto scaling and buffering the request to improve, to improve the user container concurrency limit and recording some metrics such as latency. We did a simple test and found that when the concurrency request increased, the memory resources required by queue proxy also increased. Moreover, even in the absence of any requests, queue proxy still requires about 20 megabytes in, of memory space. Imagine that in a cluster of 10,000 instances, our queue proxies will take up more than 200 gigabytes of memory space, and this is the actual memory overhead brought by the queue proxy. Knative Serving provides two ways to configure the resource request of queue proxy. The first is fixed configuration. In this way, our queue proxy will have the same resource request configuration. And the second is proportional configuration. In this way, the request resource of queue proxy is determined by user container instance. For example, if we cite in 50%, the user container requests, uh, for example, 100 megabytes memory, then the queue proxy will request 50 megabytes. It is worth noting. However, that the ability of a user container to handle requests is not only determined by resource allocation. Even if the size of, if, even if the same size of the resource are allocated, the number of requests for different applications can, pro can process may vary greatly. Which means, on the one hand, some queue proxy doesn't have enough resources to handle incoming requests, resulting in low memory utilization of user container. On the other hand, some queue proxy may have too much resources, when resulting in, which will result in low memory utilization of queue proxy itself. So anyway, there is a resource wasting problem then how to maximize the resource utilization? In order to fix the problem above, we make queue proxy at node level instead of at that car. All user container posts in the same pole, in the same node share this node queue proxy as a left figure. Node Queue proxy will ask auto scaler to scale based on its resource usage. This method has a following advantage. User container resource can be fully used. And the node queue proxy resource almost can be fully used. And much less resource cost when queue proxy is in idle, even if there are many idle instances on the node. That is, um, the idle means the pod that doesn't uh, process any requests. There will only be one node queue proxy instance on the node, which can save a lot of resources. Now, let's look at the other challenge, performance loss. As shown in the figure, the user send a request to the gateway, which, which forwards the request to 
to the Q proxy in the corresponding port, and then the Q proxy forwards the request to the user container in the same port. Compared with direct access to user container, the traffic forwarding path in Canative is longer, which will bring bring performance loss. The latency for users sending requests to NY is affected greatly by the internet. So we only focus the following two performance loss points. One is the latency from the gateway to the queue proxy, and the other is the latency from the queue proxy to the user container. We optimize the performance for these two points, the chief two points. In order to optimize the latency from NY to Q proxy, we have tried many methods, including CPU bondings, turning off some unnecessary additional functions, and the rebalancing the listener of NY. The optimized NY has obviously improvement in QPS and the latency. At a fixed QPS, for example, uh, for 4,000 QPS, the optimized NY has significantly lower latency than the native NY. The latency of top 90, top not, top 90 percent can be reduced by up to 40 percent. When QPS is unlimited. Compared with the native NY, the QPS of the optimized NY is significantly improved also. And the QPS increased can reach 100%. In addition, we use eBPF to accelerate the data transmission from Q proxy to user container. As we can see from the left figure, with Q proxy running as a sidecar in a traditional network, the path a packet has to take to reach the user container is pretty tortuous. An inbound packet has to traverse the host TCP IP stack to reach the post network namespace via a virtual SLI connection and go through the network stack of port to reach the Q proxy sidecar, which forwards a packet through the loopback interface to reach the user container. With eBPF, we hook, we hook up our program to socket operations in the kernel, which can record sockets in a hash map and redirect the packet according to that map. When the packet arrives on the host, our program will dispatch it straightly to its destination. This much more direct route will result in lower latency. Ah, now that's all. And we have some, some works to do in the future. We have submit some, some, we have submit some pull requests to fix fix or to implement the feature to the Canadian community before. And we book and we would like to contribute more in the future. In addition, we are trying to software, hardware, scenery to provide the best cost efficiency to our users. To make more users benefit from the service is our constant goal. Thank you for your listening.